in this video we are going to discuss how we can draw a pyramid pattern using Java. We will use loops to display this pyramid pattern of stars. We will analyze the problem from problem solving viewpoint and then we will write the code. Hi, I am Dr. Shahriar Hossein. Today I am going to explain how we can draw the popular pyramid pattern. Drawing this pyramid pattern is widely used in teaching programming courses because it requires some analysis of the problem before we directly jump into the code. Let us jump into the analysis part of this problem first. Notice in this pyramid on the screen that we have one star in the first line, three stars in the second line, five stars in the third line, seven stars in the fourth line, and finally there are nine stars in the fifth line. The pattern is such that the number of stars increases in the consecutive lines. Our target is to use a loop to go over each line and print the stars. Let us assume that we will use a variable named i to go over every line. Therefore, i will vary from 1 to 5 for this example, because we have 5 lines of stars. It will be really helpful if we can come up with a relationship between a line number i and how many stars we should print on that line. Let us try to find a relationship between the line number and how many stars to print in that line. When we are in line 1, we print 1 star. When we are in line 2, we print 3 stars. When we are in line 3, we print 5 stars. So and so forth. The question we are trying to frame here is, when we are in the i-th row, how many stars will we print? Notice that the number of stars to be printed is equal to 2 times the line number we are currently in minus 1. Let us check if the hypothesis is correct for our running example. When we are in the first line, i is equal to 1. Therefore, the number of stars in the first line should be 2 times i minus 1, which is 2 times 1 minus 1, um, which is 1. Therefore, we print 1 star. When we are in the second line, i is equal to 2. Therefore, the number of stars in the second line should be 2 times 2 minus 1, which is 3. Therefore, we print 3 stars in the second line. When we are in the third line, i is equal to 3. Therefore, the number of stars in the third line should be 2 times 3 minus 1, which is 5. Hence, we print 5 stars. If we keep doing these calculations, we will see that the formula for number of stars in the ith line, which is 2i minus 1, is correct for any line. That is great. We have a formula for number of stars for the ith line. We will be able to print that many stars in the ith line when we will write the program. We have left out a crucial item in our analysis. Notice that printing a pyramid of stars is not just printing stars in a pattern. What do I mean by that? In each line, we have some spaces before we print a star. The leading space becomes smaller and smaller in subsequent lines. In the last line, there is no gap between the border and the first star of that line. These leading gaps in these lines are actually space characters. That means we print a number of spaces before printing the stars in each line. Let us analyze how many spaces we need to print before printing the stars in each line. 
that is using the line number i we will try to come up with a formula for number of spaces in a line let us draw some grids around so that we can count how many spaces we have in each line we have uh, four spaces in line one we have three spaces in line two we have two spaces in line three we have one space in line four line five contains zero spaces Notice that the number of leading spaces in a line is total number of lines minus i. For example, let us take line number 1 where i is equal to 1. The number of spaces is 5 minus 1 which is 4. In line 2, i is equal to 2. The number of spaces in the second line is 5 minus 2 which is 3. Therefore, we have 3 spaces in the second line. In line 3, i is equal to 3. The number of spaces in the third line is 5 minus 3, which is 2. In line 4, i is equal to 4. The number of spaces in the fourth line is 5 minus 4, which is 1. Therefore, we have just one space in the fourth line. In line 5, i is equal to 5. The number of spaces in the fifth line is 5 minus 5, which is 0. Therefore, there is no leading space in the fifth line. Notice that for the ith line, if we subtract i from the total number of lines, we will get the number of leading spaces. Therefore, we can say the number of spaces in line i is equal to n minus i, where n refers to the total number of lines. Based on our analysis, we have come up with two things. If we have n lines, then the number of leading spaces in the ith line is n minus i. The number of stars in the ith line is 2 times i minus 1. We will use these pieces of information in our code. I will write a pseudocode first, then I will write the actual Java code. I will ask the user about how many lines the pyramid should contain. Let us say the user enters a um, number of lines in a variable named n. Then I will write a loop that will iterate n times. To iterate, I will use a variable i. Inside the loop, i contains in which line I am right now. Therefore, based on our discussion earlier, I will print n minus i spaces first and then I will print 2 times i minus 1 stars. I will make sure to write a new line after printing all the required stars in a line. That's it. We have the structure of the code. Let us go for coding. In the pyramid problem, we are given n, the number of lines, um, as the input. Given the number of lines, we draw the pyramid that contains n lines. In the example of the screen, n is equal to 5, that is, we have 5 lines of stars. We will need at least two variables, one is n, which will hold number of lines to print. The other is i, which we will use to keep track of which line we are currently in. So far, we have been writing separate lines to declare variables. We can actually declare these two variables in one line. Just by saying int n, i and then putting a semicolon. That is, we can declare multiple variables in just one line. We just have to keep the variable names separated by commas. Now we create the scanner variable in a variable named scan. We ask the user to provide the number of lines. Notice that scan.nextInt prompts the user for an integer input. I have 
written the spelling of the next int incorrectly. In a correct code, the letter I of the word next int should be a capital letter, not a small i. We are writing it incorrectly to see how the compiler tells us to correct the error. I should mention that a compiler tries to tell us about incorrect syntax. However, a compiler does not recognize the logic behind our program. The best it can do is just inform us if any syntax is incorrect. Anyway, we will see what the compiler tells us when we will attempt to compile this program. As we wrote in our pseudocode, we are writing the loop that will go over all numbers between 1 and n. Now we will have to print the leading spaces. Remember, we need to print n minus i spaces. To print these n minus i spaces, let us write a loop. The loop variable is sp. sp will vary from 1 to n minus i. We will just print a space in each iteration of this inner loop. Now that we have printed the spaces, we have to print the stars. The number of stars we have to print is 2 times i minus 1. Let us write another loop that iterates 2 times i minus 1 times. We are using a variable named st that will help in executing a for loop 2 times i minus 1 times. Inside this loop, we will print a star. Again, this particular loop will print 2i minus 1 stars. We are almost done. Let us take a look at the pseudocode. We have the outer for loop. We wrote the code to print all the spaces required in a line. We also wrote the code to print all the stars required to print in a line. Um, now, the only thing left is, after printing the stars, we need to print a new line. To print a new line, we just write system.out.println without anything inside the parenthesis. We are done with the code, at least we think so, for now. Let us save the file, compile it, and run it. Oops! Notice that the compiler is telling us that it does not recognize um, the item next int. As said earlier, the compiler only recognizes an error when there is anything that is not found in its list of syntax. Next int with a small i is not in its list of syntax. Therefore, it was able to detect the error. We know how to correct this. Let us go to the code, change the small i of next int to capital I. Now save the file and compile it. There is no error now. Let us run the program now. The program is asking the user about the number of lines in the pyramid. The user enters 4. The pyramid with 4 lines are drawn. Notice that the pattern has all the desired numbers of stars in the line. The pattern also has all the desired number of leading spaces. The user runs the program again. The program asks for the number of lines. The user enters 10. The program prints a pyramid that has 10 lines. The program outputs the patterns correctly for any number of integers. The purpose of the video today is to demonstrate not only how we can print the pyramid pattern. The main idea is that we have to analyze a problem before diving into coding. For most real-life problems, you will see that analysis of the problem and coming up with a sketch of the code help write the code quickly. In this given problem of printing the pyramid pattern, I could not write the code without really doing the analysis. I had to figure out how the pattern is changing from one line to another. We need analysis for that. The summary is, 
One, please do an analysis of the problem you are trying to solve before you start to code. Two, come up with a sketch of the solution on a paper first. Three, then go for coding. Many times you will see that coding is the easy part. The analysis is the most important part of programming. Anyway, if you haven't subscribed to our website computingforall.com and to the YouTube channel where this video is hosted, please do so um, to receive notifications on our new articles and video lectures. All the best wishes for you. Please don't hesitate to contact us via the comments section below. See you soon in another video.